Calculation groups in Power BI are amazing. They basically let you create the DAX patterns that you store in calculation items. And those patterns you can apply to any measure you like. And this way, you don't have to write that many measures. You can work much more efficiently in Power BI. Now, time intelligence is a very common example of how to use calculation groups. But in this video, I'm going to show you three ways in which you can use calculation groups that you might not have seen before. Let's dive in. The first example that I have for you is to use calculation groups to calculate the summary statistics for different measures. Now, let's take, for example, sales. Now, over here, total sales broken down by product subcategory. Now, one option that we would have is to create separate measures. Now, these measures we can then take and add to the table one by one. If we want to do exactly the same thing for, let's say, the discount, well, then we would have to write another four measures, just like this. And if we want to do it, let's say, for the forecast as well, another four. And that multiplies very quickly. Now, instead of doing it like this, we can make use of calculation groups. So let me take those measures out again. And now we go to the modeling view. OK, now let's click here on the three dots, then choose new calculation group. All right, and that's it. Now we have to repeat this three more times. I also want to have the average, max, and then. All right, there you go. Here we have the calculation item for the average max and min. And now we just have to rename the calculation group. Let's end the column in that table. We can just call aggregation. All right, now let's use that calculation group in that table from before. Now to apply the calculation items that are inside of this calculation group to total sales, we need to add the calculation group to the filter context. Now, how can we do that? We can make use of the filter panel, or we can also add a slicer to the right of it. So let's add a slicer to the right of our table, add the aggregation column that holds the calculation items. And now we can simply click on the calculation item that we want, for example, the average. And you see, now over here we have the averages, and it can switch to the maximum, the minimum, or the total sum that we started off with. And now you might think, well, that didn't save me much time because I still had to write four calculation items that I applied to that measure. However, the beautiful thing is that we can now also use the same patterns for different base measures. So if I slide this a little bit more to the right and then also add maybe the total discount next to the total sales, then those patterns will also be applied to the total discount measure. So Let's switch here to the average. And now we also have the average discounts for the different product subcategories. And if I want to see the max, I simply click here on the calculation item max using that slicer without having to write separate measures that I showed you before. And that can save you a lot of measures. All right, time for number two. We can also use calculation groups to activate a relationship. Now, let me show you how this can be helpful. 